So Christian, he has a, a, a Wacom drawing tablet up here, which is what he uses to animate on. And on the right side, you'll see he has Clip Studio open, which is pretty much the industry standard for uh, for drawing keyframes in the anime industry here. On the left, you're going to see Kamikai. This is our software screen. Um, there's multiple tools in here. Today, we're only going to be focused on Magic Pen. Uh, so the purpose of Magic Pen, you can actually go ahead and do the screen hack right now. So the way we kind of, uh, the hack and workaround we work so this can work alongside any uh, animation software like Clip Studio is we just do a, a screen screen capture. So you can see he's selecting the, um, the canvas inside of Clip Studio. So he's setting his aspect ratio here. This is for the screen capture. Sweet. And then he's going to start doing a rough sketch. So this primary, the primary kind of use for this tool and what it's currently being used for right now uh, in commercial productions is as a drawing assistant. Uh, so in anime, I'm sure a lot of people here already know this, but every frame of anime is hand drawn, frame at a time. Um, it's a, an extremely grueling process, um, and every uh, keyframe starts with a rough, kind of like this that you see here on the right. Um, it's known as like a like a, a layout. So you can take the rough layout like this, and oh, we're I think we have really slow internet. <laughs> Everyone that says okay, please shut down your Wi-Fi. Give us your bandwidth, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, our inference is faster than this, I promise. This is the Wi-Fi. We tell all of our customers the only thing they need is fast internet connection. Okay, all right, we're starting to get some outputs. So it's essentially looking at what Kush is drawing. We train character models, so we train Loras on every single character that you can load up inside of here. Whenever we work at the studio, they send us their uh, model sheets and we train character, character Loras based on those model sheets. So the animator would just select um, the, the character that they're working on. You can't see it, it's a little hidden down there right now. They'd select their character. This character is named Minako. This is actually one of Kush's original characters. Um, yeah, so it understands exactly what this character is supposed to look like. We train on both line art, and there'll be a line art version, and then there's a color version of this character for the coloring portion of the pipeline. But right now we're just doing the, the Genga or the keyframes as line art. Uh, which is in alignment with the industry here. Um, so this is a keyframe machine. This is meant to assist with the process of, of making keyframes, or Genga. Um, the idea here is to just speed up the process while still allowing the animator to have a lot of uh, precision creative control, which they really need. If you don't give them the, the exact kind of precision control that they need to get the exact output that they want, they won't use the tool. Um, so this kind of iterative process, you can see, um, I, I missed it, but Kush, he got an output that he liked, um, and then he copied it back into Clip Studio, and it's, it's kind of refeeding re that output back into uh, Kamikai. So there's this iterative kind of workflow where uh, an animator can step-by-step -step incrementally uh, refine their drawing until they arrive at a, a final keyframe that they're happy with. Um, this process of drawing of uh, keyframes frame at a time with magic pen assisting is about 60 to 80 percent faster than traditional animation. So it's a lot faster. And the, the drawing of the keyframes, the Genga, is one of the most, if not the most time consuming uh, part of the entire production of anime. So this is a hugely valuable tool for speeding up productivity uh, for an anime studio. Do we have any questions? I, it, it's not actually using stream diffusion, but it's it's similar because um, you know we want to give them fast results. Um, if we had fast internet connection, we'd be looking at about every two seconds to get a new output, um, and we are working on getting that uh, faster. Um, but what's most important is that. We'll we have optimized for both speed and quality at the same time. Oh, we have a question. Do you have to have characters already to um, make this kind of process? Do you have to settle on the character and then try to um, use it to capture movement? Or 
can you draw a character from scratch with your four? That's a good question. So. Uh, for Magic Pen specifically, if you're trying to do an animated sequence, it is actually really important that you have the character model loaded up. It, it makes the process a lot faster. However, one of the other use cases for Magic Pen that, that it, we see people using it for is actually to create characters. So um, that would be like a freestyle mode is what we call it, where you, you don't have a character lore loaded up. You're just working off the baseline model, and you can do this kind of uh, character ideation exploratory thing where you can come up with a new character. Um, we also have tools that allow us to then take that single character, color that character, and then from that single image, generate it into an entire character sheet. So the model sheet gets generated, and we also um, have a character training, auto training uh, section of the, of the software where you can then train the model very easily. But the, to answer your question, when you're using this to make multiple frames and sequences and animation, it performs so much better if you have that character model. It really is kind of the essence of what keeps things consistent. And also allows for the animator to not have to put in that much information. Um, the main thing that, that from the, the rough sketch that the AI is getting is the perspective of the camera, um, the pose of the character in each of the frames, and then the, the proportions of the body. But it can be very, very rough rough sketches as long as you have that information there provided by the animator. Uh, because of these character models, it's able to look at that and say, okay, I, I know what you're trying to do. And it kind of anticipates what the animator wants to do. Um, in the industry, these model sheets are really important for all animators working on, whether it's Gengar or Doga, they send them the model sheets and they look at these model sheets as reference. When you've got, you know, hundreds of animators working on a project, there's actually a really big issue of consistency. Um, everybody draws a little bit different, so you have people that there's their dedicated job, is so it's like on and up on the inside of the studio, they get the drawings back from all the other freelance animators, and they have to work to put everything back on the model manually. They're, they're making these corrections so that everything seems consistent from scene to scene, cut to cut. Um, so by using these uh, models, it kind of automatically forces everything to, to stay on model. So this is one of the um, other benefits of, of doing it this way. It solves that, which is actually a really big problem in the industry. Any other? Oh. What's the difference of a card maker AI versus a real and the color, what the important um, different function that the two AI pose? That's a, a great, uh, great question. She asked, what's the difference between Kamikai and Kriya? Yeah, so, to, you know, they're, they're similar in concept. Kriya is, you can draw in and you can get something cleaned up and you can color it. Uh, the, the, the big difference is, if you were to hand Kriya to any animator in, in, in these professional production, they wouldn't actually be able to use it. Um, there's not enough uh, precision control. Um, for us, like that's the, the clear difference. You know, the, um, Kriya, I think, has a, a great user base, which is more uh, consumer focused, and it, it makes it more of like a creative, fun tool. Uh, but when we're talking about trying to meet the expectations of the commercial industry, they have the highest standard, the bar that you have to meet. They need the absolute highest amount of precision control to be able to actually use this tool in production. So there's a lot of ways uh, that our tool offers that precision control that makes this a commercially viable production-ready tool that Korea or frankly nothing else that I've seen has. Thank you, it's really cool. Um, my question is, you mentioned the LoRa. How many images do you need to train the LoRa? And what's the base model? Uh, I can't disclose the base model, but I can answer your question about the LoRa. Um, we used to need quite a few images to have like a robust uh, character model that actually functions. Um, and we have refined the process. It's a kind of proprietary process that we refined over many months. Uh, that allows us to train on a very small data set and still have a robust and functional aura. Um, the reason we did this is because as we started working with studios, we said, hey, send us your data so we can train characters. They sent us a model sheet, and it's like eight to 10 images. And we're like, oh, okay, uh, we need to figure this out. Um, We've also, uh, we're building in a, a, a system that actually will allow for these characters to become uh, more robust over time as the, as the animator uses the software. So as they start creating outputs, 
uh, they can go through and flag ones that they really like, and those will get automatically sent back through and retrain the lore, so the lore actually becomes better over time. Is that addressed? Okay, thank you guys so much.